What's good, people? Uncle Hotep back at it again. Happy Friday. How's everyone doing out there? I'm okay. I'm about to go take a walk. Exercise. <laughs> but before I do that, let me do this video. The alt-right and black nationalists bond online over their shared anti-Semitism. I knew this was coming. I almost thought it was Hotep. I was like, they're going to get us Hotep out of here. But no! No, no, they're going, they dug out the NOI. They dug out Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's who they dug out. <laughs> Since the election of President Donald Trump, right-wing white nationalists, also called the alt-right, have been punched, chastised, and ridiculed for their hateful beliefs. But as of last month, it looked like, it, oh my gosh, let me, let me uh, silence this. Sorry, these ads is, a pain. But as of last month, it looks like they might have found some non-white friends online. Oh my gosh. Minister Louis Farrakhan, leader of the Nation of Insom, tweeted on October 13th that now was the time to bring his separatist dream to fruition. Black people, we should be more convinced that it's time for us to separate and build a nation of our own. That's what Lewis said. Soon after, leaders of the alt-right replied to Farrakhan with an invitation to join forces to realize their shared goal of an ethno-state. This is the sort of self-determination we in the broader alt-right support. Would you like to discuss this in a public forum? Jared Taylor, founding editor of the white supremacist magazine <laughs> American Resistance. You know, I'll say one thing about Taylor. Y'all severely have over overblown this guy man <laughs> you know what i mean i think he's working for the brackets man a lot of these guys are working for the brackets man um you can't see he skirts the issues he say oh they're white too you know what i mean i'm like hey it's none of my business but you can't like if um it's like giving somebody a pass for creating the problem that you're in you know what i mean um who created the immigration problem? Who created the, the uh, uh, what's the, uh, let me think about how to say this. Who created your Middle East policy? You know what I mean? Who created these, these wars? You know what I mean? It's like you're giving them a pass. You know what I mean? But they're going to, I mean, why would you do that? Because I think, I think at the end of the day, they, they would, uh, they would take that pass and they're going to shove it right up your behind again. <laughs> you know what I mean? But hey, now, hey, y'all do what y'all want to do. Um, <laughs> here goes this is from No Shame November something that we would have shocked me last year but just makes me sigh now a, a, a defend white identity blog endorsing <laughs> Louis Farrakhan <laughs> later Mike Enoch whose podcast The Daily Show uh, exposes anti-Semitism to its reportedly 100,000 listeners expressed his long-held admiration for the minister, he tweeted. I've always been a, a fan of Farrakhan, to be honest. TBH. Of course, it wouldn't be an alt-right Twitter party if neo-Nazi Richard Spencer ch didn't chime in. We in the alt-right are open for a real dialogue, he responded to Farrakhan's separatist message. A few days later, Farrakhan returned to favor. See, they're shaking in their boots now. They're shaking in their boots. They're like, oh no, the alt right's getting allies. No, no, no. Some day, somebody told me that the alt right, Mr. Trump's people, had a tweet or something. We kind of like what Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam is saying. We with them to separate in a land of their own. I said, very good, all right. Y'all want to talk about it? Talking has been done. Nothing to talk about because now it's either separation or death. <laughs> An ideological alliance between the white and black nationalists makes some sense on a political level. But groups want to form a country without another one in it. Both groups. But for Oren Siegel... Director of the ADL <laughs> Center on Extremism. Both groups are also united by the deep hatred of Jewish people. Here they always got to put their two cents in this, man. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> 
It's unlikely that white nationalists will join rallies with Nation of Islam, but their fund fundamental ideologies, which consist of anti-Semitism and separatism, are two sides of the same coin. They might have more in common than people might initially think, he told Newsweek on Thursday. Siegel, who's been at the league for more than a decade while studying extremists. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? Like, you ask somebody, what do you do with your, what do you do with your time? Oh, I study extremists. <laughs> this is insane. Also noted in a recent blog post that the camaraderie between the white and night black nationalists goes back decades. Now, I've always said this. I've said this to people on uh, Twitter and on, on the Kali. You know, George Lincoln Rockwell, the founder of the American Nazi Party, attended a separate speech by National Islam leader Malcolm X and was quoted as saying that he was fully, fully concerned with their program and that he had the highest respect for Elijah Muhammad, the Nation of Islam founder. Sequel also notes that Ku Klux Klan leader... <laughs> David Duke, I don't know, they're so generalizing with this article, like, it's so many falsehoods in here, has also tweeted agreement with Farrakhan, and in 1985, Farrakhan met with Thomas Metzger, a former KK leader at an NOI rally in San Diego. For many, Farrakhan is a social justice leader and should be revered, despite his anti-Semitic views. But for Siegel, any shred of Farrakhan's credibility went out the window the second he entertained collaborating with the alt-right. Anybody who had skepticism about the anti-Semitism in the NOI should be put that skepticism to bed. Now he seems to be open dialogue with the white supremacists. Siegel doesn't believe these commonalities will manifest themselves on the streets or in a united organization, but he noted it's entirely possible they would be both on a podcast together in, the, in this moment of time. Regardless, both the alt-right and... Black nationalist anti-Semites pose a serious threat to Jewish people in all minorities across the country. Both of these groups voice a hateful message, and the more they unite, the more people they'll potentially reach. We must continue to speak out against them or risk more violence against those they hate. You know, this is kind of, you know, as, as usual, it's overblown. You know, the alt-right is, to me, is mostly pro-jewish i have it if if somebody co wants to correct me i'm wrong well let me backtrack the alt-right leaders are mostly pro-jewish no no yeah i mean whether you're gonna say those are the plants or whatever i don't know what you're gonna say but the most of them want uh ethno state and they use israel as an example of the ethno state they want so I don't know how much anti-Semitism you can you can say. Now some of y'all might come in all oh, that's they're not the real all right. I'm just telling you what the mainstream media, and this is what the normies are going to see. What the normies see and what's actual is two different things most of the time. But as long as the normies are the majority of the population, you got to go off some of what some of the stuff what they think. It doesn't matter what's real. Or what if you, if if y'all support these ideals or not, or you support our, our our greatest ally or not? As long as the the, the normies think y'all don't, then that's what it's going to be. You see what I'm saying? So, it, but in reality, I don't see it. Well, I'm, I'm like y'all. Uh, I hear a lot of y'all say it. Well, we want we want the same stuff Israel. We want a wall like Israel. We want an ethno state like Israel. That's what y'all want. Now I don't know how it, it becomes anti Semitism when you're you're talking about both groups wanting an ethno state. Like that I did, that doesn't hear I don't hear anything wanting to harm anybody else i don't hear anything about wanting to do damage to anybody else i hear both people want an ethno state see they, they know this you're not you're not trying trying to harm anyone else that goes against the the powers that be the brackets the lizard men's dreams for the world it's not just america it's the world you know what I mean? One world, no more nations, grotesque creations. That's the plan. 
You know what I mean? And uh, that doing building ethno states that that would that's not in the plans, and that's why they're using every everything they want, everything they have, and they'll call it anti-Semitism and everything else to impede the progress. So you know I mean, if it, first they gotta they gotta uh, control the the dialogue. You know what I mean? They can't make that attractive to people. You know, if they made it attractive to people, then, you know what I mean? That's half the battle right there. Um, even though I think an ethno state is like, it's far fetched. <laughs> you know what I mean? For either side. Um, you have so many obstacles for, for that. Uh, and, uh, and to be honest, I, I, look, let me rephrase that. You know, you have some ethno states, or literally, like, like you know, Japan, and uh, there's one people like to say, you know, Israel is kind of like that, but not really. Um, you know, but that's just the nature of how human, I mean, humanity has taken its course in this new millennia. You know what I mean? America was built uh, differently. So I don't know how y'all can just justify changing course and saying, hey, man, we we, we just going to move all. I mean, if, if y'all want to do it manually, like if everyone, all white folks want to move to Wyoming and Montana, then I mean, go ahead. No, let nobody stop you. But I mean, for the the, the, the majority of the land, I don't know. I don't say how you can justify it or you can convince the people to do that. Um if you can convince your followers like Mormons and stuff like that to move to a, to neighborhoods and build these neighborhoods, that's fine. And you, but then you got to control your politicians, or else they're just going to ship some some Somalians into your into your neighborhood, like they've been doing. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Uh, this America was built different. It's not like um, this is recent human history, um, and. You know, there's always, it's never been like a, I like, I know a lot of y'all say it's a white nation or whatever, like it was built by white folks, but Negroes has been here just as long, you know what I'm saying? So it, it doesn't, I, I can't, like, it's always been, there's in, always been Native Americans, whites, and blacks, pretty much since the inception of America. Now you can say other groups have come in, yeah, I can understand, it. They've, they have come in, but the time to stop that was when they started doing it. When they started doing the natural, the immigration act, y'all should have stopped that then. I, there was no outcry for it then. But now y'all see, <clears throat> you know, some of y'all see the writing on the wall, and some and some time, and some of it is, you know, people are over exaggerating the threat. You know what I mean? Um, there wouldn't be if you if you fear um, being. Uh, this, the demographics of America changing. Go make some babies. I don't, this, that's the it's, it's the simplest. It's the simplest solution. You know, a lot of times you you you, you can get your your kids off Hollywood. You know, what I mean, a lot of times there's there's, there's a generation of pe people that weren't just not having kids. They rather have a dog. You know, what I mean, they they were watching Sex in the City so to, when they were growing up. You know what I mean? They they idolized these these Hollywood pets that didn't put a, a premise. A premium on raising a family and building a family. You see what I'm saying? There's there's other things you should do. You, I mean, the, I think the primary thing is worrying about uh, controlling your information that gets into your, your families and raising a, a good family values. You know what I mean? That's what needs to be done. And that means leaving Hollywood alone, leaving Pedowood alone, leaving all that stuff alone. You know what I mean? Um, you know, hey, you know, Farrakhan and them, we'll, we'll see what happens. I think it's just going to be a bunch of talk, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> anyway, this is Uncle Hotel. Peace.